My name is Jim, and we're going to talk a little bit about SQL tuning today and about how to make your queries more responsive so that you can uh, have faster response times in your applications. And as your data grows, um, you'll not face nearly the performance issues that you would otherwise, and production's a lot less likely to go down. So let's have a look at a, an example that we're going to be using throughout here. Um, I've got this is the AdventureWorks database open. Uh, Microsoft makes this. This is 2008, and again, we're running 2008 Pro of SQL Server. Okay, full version. Now, transaction history is a big table. That's good for optimizing. Uh, it's going to run for a while, about five seconds. And likewise, we'll be joining this and playing with this a little bit with product, and that will run fairly fast in less than a second. Now, uh, one of the things that definitely does not run faster is an inner join because of all the work that needs to be done row by row. So when uh, making this query, one of the least effective things that I can do is to join these two. Okay. And I know already from having looked at this that product ID exists in both, by the way, and that's the foreign key. So... And I'm also a big fan of aliases. Make things run faster. Or not to run faster, but to have IntelliSense work faster. All right. We'll join this on product ID here. And product ID here. And so now when I run this, highlighting only the join query here. Remember before... This was about four seconds of transaction history and less than a second for product. But when they're run together, this is going to take a lot longer. See, it's still running. We've got data showing, but the application's got nothing back until this is complete. Assuming that this is running on the back end of a report or something. Now we're up to 11 seconds, where this was four seconds and less than one. Now by joining them, we've got a response time up to 11 a lot longer, a lot less efficient. So what's one of the first tricks we'd use to get this to respond faster? Uh, depends on what you want returned, of course, but assuming that we're only returning one or two columns from transaction history, like if we we're just returning the transaction ID or something, or transaction date, We'll just go with that. That's fine. That'll speed things up a bit when we're returning just one column as opposed to returning everything first off. And so we'll see that instead of running for 11 seconds, now we're down to three. So there's some optimization done with columns return. And the other major thing that we can do is to add conditions. Okay. So by adding conditions... P dot, let's get a certain color. That sounds like some great. How about only black? Okay, running it. Goes even faster. Now we're down to less than a second because we reduced our result set size back from the query. And so now it's dramatically smaller. Okay. There are other things you can do for performance tuning. Um, we can use subqueries instead of joins, if you can get away with that. I believe I mentioned that before. Um, you can break apart your join query into uh, several smaller queries and store them in temp tables or in table variables. That's another way to help. So all these things work together. Um, Join us in the next video and we'll use table variables and temp tables 
for optimizing queries.